Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and today I'm here with my weekly whip and chat. If you're new, whip stands for work in progress, like the diamond painting I have here today. And chat stands for chat. And that just really means that we're going to spend some time today catching up, talking about all things diamond painting and life. And um, if you enjoy this kind of thing, I do these whip and chats every Monday and really enjoy checking in with you then. I also do a lot of other diamond painting videos um, like reviews and tutorials and unboxings. So if you're not already subscribed and that sounds like something you'd enjoy seeing, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and I'd love to have you here. Like I said, today I'm going to be working on a diamond painting. This kit is called Butterfly Mermaid. Here's the image and it is from um, Shimmering Canvases and is by the artist Allison Wu. And this is a new to me company and um, I, I really enjoy working on kits from a variety of different companies and kind of testing them out for you and sharing what my experience is like with with various companies and what their you know the features of their kits seem to be and hopefully that helps you decide if that's a place that you want to shop so um, i'm excited to finally be working on a kit from this company i have this and another one in my stash and um yeah we'll talk about that more in just a bit let me first tell you more about the accessories i'm using which i will of course have all the shops linked in the description box of this video if you'd like to go and check out some small shops in the community. First, I have this pen, which is from Norse Alchemist. I opened it in a relatively recent small shop haul, but haven't actually used it yet. So we'll be using this today. Gosh, that's pretty. I love a hybrid. The tray is from Muni Made. Um, this is one of my very, very, very favorite colors that I have from Muni Made. It's the large tray and is this one called fairy floss or something like that but i love the color gradient so incredibly much it's so beautiful and i think it suits the um the artwork on this kit really well too for my single placer i'm going to be using this wax called not your mama's mud and the scent let's see baking pecan brownies and yeah no it smells like really <laughs> really sweet. And then in my multi-placer, I'm going to be using this putty from Abby's Diamond Putty and More. If you're one of my friends that lives over in the UK, please check out this particular shop because I believe they're based in the UK. And, you know, especially when I find shops that I know are based internationally, I like to mention it for my non-US viewers because I know shipping can be pretty cost prohibitive, especially when it comes to some of these smaller shops. So FYI, uh, also though, if you live in the United States <clears throat> and you're like, Oh, I really want to try out this putty, which I've used this putty before. I like it uh, a lot. Um, if you also want to get some diamond painting kits and you can just kind of tack these on for, um, without paying any additional shipping, Diamond Art Studio UK um, partners with the shop and carries some of their scents. And if you order a diamond painting kit from them, you can add these on from the Diamond Art Studio UK shop. And, you know, just kind of saves on shipping. I love Diamond Art Studio UK's kits too. So it's like a win when you're getting a lot of really cool and great quality stuff. So this cover minder was a gift that um, a subscriber reviewer sent me a couple of years ago. And I think it's a sticker that they cast in resin. And um, I always have this out actually, um, on my desk. I have like a little set of, a little mini set of shelves on my desk and it has like a metal frame to it. And I have some of my favorite cover minders cause they have magnets on them just kind of attached to the, that metal framework. And this is one of the ones that's always there because I feel like it's just a good reminder and it doesn't really matter like what sort of phase I'm going through. Like this is, this is a good reminder. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you happen to be watching still, I know it's, like I said, it's been a few years since this, uh, they sent this to me as a gift, but I still very much cherish it. So I think that covers it. Let me grab, I need to load up this pen. It hasn't been used. So, um, I need to kind of load up all the things. This is Diamond Art Club's thin 12 metal, uh, metal 12 placer. And it's basically all that I use at this point. Uh, I did see that Diamond Art Club released some new accessories this week. They released their own kind of putty, which I have both of the scents of that on the way. Actually, one was unscented. The other was rose scented. I bought it though still because it was pink, even though I personally, I am not a fan of floral scents 
but I'm curious to see how strong it is. And I thought maybe that could be helpful for me to share with you in case you're scent sensitive like I am. Maybe I can sort of share what my impression is as far as if it's a really strong scent or more of a light scent. I saw that they also released some pens that have um, like the holes in them are threaded along with some um, threaded metal tips. So they're basically screw in, threaded screw in. Um, and I think that's gonna, they, they did that to kind of address um, the concern, like the issues that some people have with the multi-placers, the metal multi-placers not necessarily fitting perfectly snugly in the, the diamond painting pens otherwise, which that's done deliberately. If you saw, I just wrapped the end of that in washi tape and that kind of just gave it some extra um, like circumference, I guess, <laughs> like area so that it, it now it's not going to go anywhere and it kind of grips the inside of the pen too. But anyway, if, if you haven't checked that out and that sounds like, you know, if that's something you've struggled with, maybe go and take a look at Diamond Art Club's website and, and see, I ended up ordering those putties along with um, a kit that I bought on, on Saturday, one of their new releases. Last week was, oh, that was tough for me. Um, I had that amazing You May Books and Nooks kit as my sneak peek, but I also needed the Chrysabug Medusa kit. I just, anything that's Chrysabug and mythology is basically an auto buy for me. Um, I, there may have been one, one or two that I have skipped, but I don't think that they were mythology pieces necessarily. Um, but no, I need all of them. <laughs> They're so pretty um, and very much up my alley and my style. I need to really quickly, I need to section this off, section off the next row. I've done the bottom row. I split this into four rows and four columns. So I've done the bottom row and we're going to get into the second row with kind of the seaweed and some of her arm uh, in this whip and chat. But first, and yes, I do actually use a tape measure to measure off my sections. Um, I really enjoy having sections that are all the same size. Um, and yeah, I know that's not everyone is quite that fastidious particular, but I like it. And I use washi tape. This measuring tape is not helping me. And there's just a bunch of the same symbol in a row right there. So my eye is not catching on um, the one that I'm going to need to put this tape along. So I'm trying to, okay, there we go. So anyway, hello, happy Monday. How are you today? I hope, I hope that your week is off to a really wonderful start. If you, if you celebrate Easter, I hope that you had um, a really nice holiday and holiday weekend, whatever that looked like for you. It was a pretty quiet day for, for me and for my family. Um, and I've been getting a little bit of diamond painting in this weekend. <laughs> um, not a ton. I don't know. I find myself, um, you know, reaching for other things. And also, like, my kiddos have been um, a lot more interactive. And, of course, like, they're going to be my priority. But I'm enjoying in the evenings really getting to sit down and get a little more diamond painting in. Was that a little bit stuck there? Okay. Oh, by the way, I'll try my best to remember to link to my unboxing of this kit if you want to kind of see that and see my first impressions of it. Um, I will do that. I um, I guess I can kind of recap that a little bit here. Oh, I put that magnet on upside down. Um, this kit, I, I got it for a couple of different reasons. I really liked that it was not a huge diamond painting. It's 45 by 45 centimeters, which sounds like a dream to me as far as trying out uh, a new to me company. I really like when I can work on a canvas that's not huge because if I run into any hiccups with it or there's something I'm not enjoying about it or something, um, it's nice when I don't have like a giant canvas to get through before I can start, sort of share my thoughts on that. Um, but this one has square drills, which is also not typically what I would that what you would see from me as far as a new to me diamond painting company goes as much as I can I really do try to have my first kit that I'm trying out from a new to me company have round diamonds because um, there's there are less issues inherently that are going to come with round diamonds um, but I know that shimmering canvases has been like in the drills game for a little while and so I knew that I liked this image and it was only available in squares. And I thought, let's, you know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. <laughs> um, 
first impressions, uh, it looks pretty well like this has um, some distinct hand charting in some areas. Hand charting is when um, there's a human being that has really gone in and done some pixel by pixel tweaks to the colors and um, you know, tried to potentially you know, eliminate some confetti, just tried to make it a little bit more streamlined and um, make it match the original artwork a bit more closely. And I see areas of this kit that absolutely make me think that there was some hand charting done. I think in some of the dark backgrounds though, it looks like maybe they didn't necessarily try to go in and do a bunch of tweaks to that because it's, I'd imagine, because it's not really the focal point of the kit. Um, there is some, some confetti and some shading that, um, I don't know, I think it's turning out well, but there is definitely some, um, heavy confetti in those particular areas. I don't know. We'll have some of it in here, like this background section. Yeah. You can see it through the camera. There's a lot of different colors going on in this, this background section here, but you know, I'll be curious to see how it looks with all those colors there. And that really just may be what's going to suit the original artwork the best. Um, the drill quality is really good with the exception of, and this has been the case for virtually every company whose kits I have worked on in the past several months, the 310. <laughs> There's not very much of it. Thankfully, most of these background colors are shades of dark blue and a little bit of purple. Uh, there was just a tiny handful of 310 like down in the bottom left corner. And I'm hoping there's not gonna be much, like really much as I go up here into the top of the canvas, but no, it's like all of these colors are fantastic top-notch quality. And then that 310, there's a bunch of diamonds that have holes on the top. And I'm just, I just, I, I, it's absolutely no shade to shimmering canvases because like I said, it has been virtually every company that I have worked on lately. And it's, I, to me, it, I can't quite make it make sense in my brain because, okay, so for example, like, so 310, this color here, <laughs> black, and 939, also a very, very, very dark color. But the 939 in this kit is pristine. The 310 is not. So I go, what is it about the process? <laughs> if like such a similar color, is um not problematic does it not have anything to do with the actual colors and pigments that are being used is it something to do with the the molds like are there molds that are only used for 310 and that's such a common color that those see so much more use i i just my i want to understand side of my brain the analytical side of my brain wants to go make it make sense what because it just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me um, that is consistently that particular color that is affected. There's gotta be something about it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, thankfully, like I said, this kit doesn't have much of that color and I'm able to, um, zip right through the color blocking on, um, a lot of these areas like the seaweed. I'm just, we're just, we're color blocking away with this particular color. So, um, this is the company that picked up license the licensing with the artist Andreas Roca um, when that artist left Diamond Art Club and has a few pieces that Diamond Art Club had had previously along with a number of others. And they had sent one to me to unbox. And just for a minute, I was tempted to go ahead and kit up that, it was a giant, it's a giant kit. Um, and I just knew, I was like, I don't have a, a giant kit like this in me right now. And it is a new to me company. I'm not going to, I don't think I want to start out with a kit that big when I have this nice, smaller size available to me. It also lets me get you a review sooner and my thoughts on it sooner because I'll finish it faster. Um, but you know, seeing this makes me go, okay, I could probably work on that Andreas Roca piece at some point and know that it's, you know, the drills are hopefully going to be really good quality and it's going to be enjoyable uh, to work on. I did complete the kit that I was kidding up with you guys last week, The Deep is Mine from JoJo's Arts. I, I completed that in a few few days. It was, it's a small kit, so that's that's why, but I have to say it was really really refreshing to work on a small kit. 
I um, shared a completion photo of that kit on my Instagram. My Instagram is just diamonds and washi. There's a couple underscores in there. <laughs> it's it's linked to my description box if you would like a link to hop over there. Uh, but I did share a photo of that completed kit over the weekend. And um, I just said, you know what? I am kind of impressed at how well this turns out for the size point. Um, I, I think it turned out really, really darn well. I, I didn't really see anyone like strongly disagreeing with me in the comments. Um, but I will be curious, like when I do a poster, I think I'll do a post review of that kit and I'll talk about it with you guys when I do my March month interview video this week, I will be so interested to hear what your thoughts are on that kit. If you feel like, you know, no, Katie, you're just looking at it with rose colored lenses because it's the novelty of working on one of these really old kits. Um, or if you're going to feel similarly to me and go, oh, dang, like even at, what was it? 30 by 42 centimeters. <laughs> Diamond Art Club did a good job <laughs> with the render on this one. I did um, see that on the pack of diamonds, I don't remember if I pointed, I don't think I pointed this out in the video, actually, uh, the whip and chat where we were opening it up together, but there actually was a, I assume was the release date st stamped on the sticker that was on the diamonds. And it looks like that kit released in early 2019. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, five years ago. <laughs> um, it's, it was fun to see all of the differences between then and now but also to see some of the same, I think sort of like hallmarks of the company that they were even doing really well five years ago. And I think it's probably one of the reasons that they're doing well today as well. So um, yeah, it, it also makes me optimistic to work on the other really old diamond art clip kits that are in my stash and go, okay, those will, those will probably turn out better than I'm expecting to, but Thanks for uh, doing that little mini unboxing with me in last week's whip and chat. That was, that was really fun to do and to share with you guys. Um, and yeah, so I am, um, I also, yes, one of you asked in last week's video um, on the whip and chat, if I was staying up to date on my temperature project, um, the dragon temperature cross-stitch conversion that I'm doing for this year. And the answer is yes, actually. Um, I am, I mean, I think the last time I worked on it was at least a few, it was a few days ago. So I'm a few days behind, but I'm going to sit down and catch up on it. Actually, maybe even after this whip and chat tonight, because I will have a month in review video for you this week. And I will want to show you how that project is coming along. And I'd like to have all of March done. Um, on that particular project, but it's, it's been quite the interesting learning experience. I have already sort of kicked around ways that I might change and adapt my approach to it for next year. And I, of course, I will share those thoughts and learnings with you. Um, as I, as I'm working on that, I'm, I probably will do some sort of check-in maybe around like the six month mark where I'll talk more in depth about what my thoughts and learnings are. And maybe that'll be helpful for you guys, especially if you start to look ahead and think that you might want to do one for yourself in 2025. That is such a weird year to say <laughs> like 2025, that feels forever away. But, um, that way, you know, if you decide that you do want to maybe do one for yourself, then you have time to order materials and whatnot well in advance. Um, I don't know if I'll do the dragon chart again next year or if I might branch out into, I mean, gosh, there are so many fun and interesting charts out there that I think I probably will. Oh no, I'm getting on. Sorry, you guys. Um, That I probably will branch out maybe. There's some really cute, like there's bookshelf ones. There's ones that are like kind of cottage core, like toadstools and stuff. Um, yeah, no, way too many cute options. So, um, if you guys have been working on a temperature project this year, how has that been going? Are you enjoying it? Or 
Is it just, is it, is it not your cup of tea? Um, what have your, what have your learnings been? What are, what are your thoughts so far? Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll have a little snapshot of that in my, in my month interview video. Um, I, I, you know what, and honestly, I'm kind of proud of myself for staying on top of it. <laughs> I kind of thought that I might get an entire month behind sometimes. The most I've gotten behind is I think about two, two weeks. There was a, there's a period, especially when I was like really, like COVID and then I was out of town for a bit. I got, I think two and a half weeks behind, um, for in earlier this month, actually. But otherwise it's like, no, I am determined. I am determined to stay on top of this and, um, be able to share, share check-ins with you guys in my month in review videos. So, um, I also, I put up my dedicated post review video this past week for Dragon Princess from Diamond Dots. And I, I really appreciated the, the input, the thoughts that you guys shared on that video. <clears throat> I have to admit, like, I was a little bit, I mean, maybe a little bit surprised, maybe a little not at how many of you commented that you thought that, uh, that was really overpriced for what it was. Um, particularly a number of you commented that the fact that it was a partial, um, was, was kind of the main reason that you felt like it was overpriced. Um, at least that's the impression that I got from your comments. And, um, it's interesting. It's like, I know that there are less materials used in terms of the diamonds that they're sending, but it's still the same amount of, of canvas and printing on the canvas. And, um, therefore like a larger box that it has to ship in potentially, even though it's got a hole in the top of it. Um, and so I don't know. I mean, it was a good size kit. It was 60 something by 70 something or 70 something by 80 something. It was a good size. And, um, I had thought that for the price that I got it for on Amazon, which was less than what they had it marked, um, marked out on the diamond dots website, which was just retail. There were no, no sales that they were advertising that I saw. Um, and that retail price was what? 89, was it 89.99 or 79.99? I think it was 89.99 on us dollars on the diamond dots website. And I got it from the diamond dots, Amazon storefront at the time it was 60 something. And I thought that that like 60 something range was about right for that size kit. But I don't know. Now I'm kind of questioning it and going, well, it was a partial. There was a good amount of the canvas that didn't have any diamonds on it. Uh, maybe that was still high. I'm not sure. Um, but I no, I have not reached out to diamond dots yet to see if they would honor any sort of, you know, warranty that comes with that since I did get it from the Amazon storefront. And you guys mentioned, a couple of you mentioned that you went to the Amazon storefront after I posted that review and the price is significantly higher. It's over a hundred dollars again. And I think that probably it sold out from the diamond dot storefront. And that's a third party seller that maybe is coming up. Um, cause I saw that the kit is now sold out on the actual diamond dots website too. So Maybe we're just, you just have to kind of wait for a restock, I would suggest, if, if you're wanting to get that kit. Or see if one of your crafting store retailers is carrying it, because there are a lot of crafting stores that carry diamond dots. So it might be worth checking and seeing. Um, I feel like that was the kit that I saw being clearanced out at like a Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby at one point, and it was marked way the heck down, and I wish I would have would have picked it up at the time because I think it was on clearance for like 20, $25 or something really, really low compared to retail price. So that was, that was at least a year ago though, if not more though. So I, you know, what can you do? <laughs> um, I am debating what kits I want to work on in April. Um, there are a number of events that I, I am interested in just in terms of like the themes are things that I would enjoy, but I, I don't want to participate for prizes at all. Just purely a, Oh, let me dive my paint along with other people that are doing the same kinds of things. Uh, but I'm, I'm very, I'm torn. The ones that I'm looking at, um, just again, that just tickle, tickle my fancy <laughs> for, for what I enjoy working on and, and gravitate towards. 
um, there's the Chris Bug along that's being hosted by the Stealthy Crafter. And there's Halfway to Halloween, which is um, hosted by Jacqueline, who's Diamond Art Sparkles on Instagram. And then Jamie, who's Jamie Paints on Instagram. And that's an Instagram event and is um, an event that I remember I was I was part of sort of the discussions with them about it because they're dear friends of mine are. And we had said something about how we had all these Halloween themed kits in our stashes, but it felt like Halloween was basically like a month and a half to two months seasonally to work on um, these kits. And that just seemed like such a short window (laughs) to get to work on all of these Halloween kits in our stash. And so why not do a an event or a diamond paint along that it was like six months from Halloween and have an excuse to pull out some of those Halloween kits to work on. And so there's that. And I have a couple of Chris Bug kits that would qualify for halfway to Halloween. So I could do two birds, one stone there if I, if I wanted to. And then, and I forgot to mention this one, there's the um, Jaded Jamboree, which is a jaded gem shop centric event that um the owner of jaded gem shop jade and anthony from single and placing are putting on and that runs april and may so i might not do that one this month like maybe i'll pull out a jaded gem shop kit in may i am not sure yet but lots and lots and lots of things out there um and i'd be curious to hear as we're going into the month of april are there any events that you're thinking of joining in on whether it's just sort of peripherally or, you know, going more into like participating in the different things that go with the event. Um, So I, yeah, I, I, I keep finishing kits. Like I finished the Jojo's art kit and I still hadn't decided what kit I wanted to work on after that one. And I was just sitting there. I feel like I was just twiddling my thumbs, scrolling through my gems flow app going, what do I want to grab? And work on what do I want to do? That was also tricky because I finished that kit just a few days before the end of this, before the end of March. And I knew that there were other kits that I was going to be looking forward to starting in the month of April. Um, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like working on my cross stitch conversion project. So I pulled out this one. <laughs> so I'll either go ahead and kit up one of the kind of eventy kits here and just have multiple whips going or I'll just finish this kit hopefully in the next week or so and um and then just jump into those events a little bit late so um yeah but I still have to decide what what I want to work on does that have a little tab on it It doesn't want to go I think yeah just a little one okay um so decisions 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 um, all these blues and greens. Let me see. How's it looking? How's it coming through on camera? Oh yeah. You can see those pretty well. Um, her skin tones are very peachy, but it's very, very much what the original artwork looks like. And I'll be curious to, um, see how it's looking as I get into like more of her body and her face as well. Uh, skin tones are tricky, (laughs) but, I, yeah, no, I'm enjoying this so far. I'm, and I think that Shimmering Canvases has a lot of really, um, like really pretty artwork in. I did see they have, they do have some AI artwork. So if that's something that you are, whether you are in support of or try to avoid, just FYI, I did, I did notice that. Um, and one of you had asked, and I get this comment every, every so often, about if I would share my thoughts on AI when it comes to like artwork and diamond painting. And I, I mean, I think I have, I think that I've, I am pretty 99% sure that I've touched on it in my whipping chats before, or I've, you know, I try to mention if I'm doing an unboxing from especially like a new to me company. And I've, I noticed that they have like a lot of AI artwork or something. I might make mention of it, but it's, it's such a, it's such a hot button topic and there's a lot to it. And I don't feel like I'm fully in the know enough to speak on it. Um, but I will try to maybe gather my thoughts more and 
talk more on it sometime. For the moment, I mean, some of you have even noticed and commented with my unboxings that uh, that probably speaks for itself, <laughs> at least for part of what my approach and mindset is at the moment, that I am not looking to be buying kits that I know are AI, but it's, it's getting hard uh, to tell. But anyway, that's not me telling you at all what you should buy or what your thoughts should be. I think that it is a very, very tricky subject. I think it's very complicated. I don't think that it is black and white, um, but I tend to land on the side of, uh, you know, I'd like to see some better understanding, some regulation, some legislation, and... Um, but I feel like Pandora's box has been opened and I don't know where we go from here. So I guess that does kind of in short sharing my thoughts on it. But again, that's, that's just my opinion. I am not passing any judgment on you guys as crafters or small shop owners and what they're doing at all. That's not what I'm here for. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a, it's a sensitive, sensitive subject for sure. So I just, I look to have really respectful discussions, um, surrounding it, but particularly when I feel like I have a little bit more knowledge and understanding of it. But anyway, so that's, that's that. <laughs> um, I, I've been thinking as we're going into the month of April, how in the world is it April already? I mean, I do this about every month and I think some of you guys do too that it just feels like where did the month go how is it April already didn't 2024 just start isn't it just after the new year right now no 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 we are we are kicking off April and I did, by the way no I don't have an April Fool's video for you this year if you want to see something that is I'll say delightfully unhinged and wildly outside of my usual content. I did do an April Fool's video last year and I honestly, I cannot even go back and watch it myself because I just am like, it's, it's so unhinged. <laughs> it's so wild. Um, it's, it's very, very silly. It's very silly. Uh, so I remember to, I'll link to it below if you want to go see, see some laughs. Um, <laughs> that was fun. In short, I, I released a video on April 1st that I called my March month in review. And I said that I completed a diamond painting a day. And <laughs> my friend, um, Jade brought over a bunch of her completed diamond paintings yeah, most, if not all of which are completely not my personal style whatsoever, which if you like, it, there's nothing at all wrong with the artwork, but it just was not ever something that I personally would have worked on as diamond paintings that added to the fun and the mania of it all. But yeah, no, I showcased and tried to deliver commentary on these kits that I absolutely had not worked on along with, you know, a number of kits from my own like completed stash. There were a bunch of kits that I had completed in like past years and stuff. So, um, yeah, if you want, want some good lighthearted April fools shenanigans, um, feel free to go and take a look, but I did not, <laughs> did not have anything like that in me for this year. Um, and yeah, no, even though Swift and Chat is going up on April fools, there's not, there's no April fools in here. I just, um, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to live my life, <laughs> but, um, I'm not typically a pranks person in general. I tend to actively dislike being a part of pranks and prank wars. I will watch them like other people being involved in them all day long, but I don't want to be involved. <laughs> um, but yeah, so April Fool's is not really, eh, you know, but if you have any fun April Fool's stories, feel free to feel free to share them. Uh, and we can all have a good, good chuckle. And, um, yeah, so as I was starting to say that as we're going into April, I've been thinking about, okay, I feel like the year is a little bit just kind of sneaking away from me. And there are things that I had wanted to try to, um, make time for and do this year as far as maybe like some different videos and different projects to work on. And knowing that it's like, okay, the first quarter of the year is over kind of, gives me that little nudge to go, okay, let's, let's revisit some of these things that I had talked about 
and thought about wanting to do here. Let's see if I can make some of them happen, especially before we get into um, the busyness of summer months and events and whatnot um, that I, I'll be involved, you know, more so in hosting. So um, my brain is is going on those sorts of things because I feel like sometimes I have a tendency to live a little bit like week to week, like, okay, what do I want to put out this week? And, um, and often it's, you know, I'm not necessarily leaving time for the kinds of like videos and content that take a little bit more time to put together. Um, but I just need to, sometimes it's like, I just need to sit down and do it <laughs> instead of just keeping it all in my brain and brainstorming on it. But yeah, I'm, I'm letting the, the date on the calendar kind of give me that Give me that little nudge to see if I can actually get some of the stuff um, done. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how that pans out. <laughs> um, I have been on a little bit of a of a hyperfixation uh, journey and search that started this past week. So I realized that I am coming up on um, actually filling up my logbook. And I've had this logbook. I mean, it has, I think, 160 something pages in it. And so it's the one that I've had since I started diamond painting, which, oh my gosh, that is the thing with April 1st. I completely forgot about that. I was going to say something earlier, but April 1st, that's my diamond painting anniversary. April 1st, 2020 was the first day that I worked on a diamond painting right in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> I'd gotten a gift from Amazon Prime, unlicensed, like little thing. But as soon as I started, I knew I was, I was hooked, but yeah, no, April 1st, my diamond painting anniversary. I share it with, um, my friend Jacqueline, who I mentioned earlier too. And yeah, no, oh, that was so fun. Oh, happy diamond painting anniversary. When did you guys start diamond painting? Do you know, like, do you know what the first sort of date was? Um, is it weird that I know what mine is anyway? <laughs> so, um, that's fun that it's like four years of diamond painting and I'm um, f finally like about to fill up my, my diamond painting logbook. So fun. Um, but anyway, so I've been on a hunt trying to look for and pick out my next logbook. Now, when I bought the one that I have now, I just picked it up at Joann's. Um, I think I probably picked it up in late... 2020 maybe early 2021 and then, then I like went through and filled it filled in like all the kits that I had worked on previously and played catch up on it and then I've you know stayed caught up on it since um but I bought it from Joann's and I just remember just sort of just picking it up I didn't necessarily set out looking for a particular size or style um but as it turns out as I started to look for another one uh, apparently I picked a size that is not super common it's around, what was it? Was it like seven and a half by 10? I, I was looking it up and apparently the size is B5 <laughs> as opposed to like you know, A4, A5, et cetera. Um, and that is just apparently not a common size of notebook. In addition to that, I had picked out a, um, a journal that has a dot grid. A lot of people use that for bullet journaling. I just, I like the flexibility of a dot grid. I don't really want lined paper for my diamond painting logbook. Um, and I kind of prefer the dot grid over the blank pages because it still gives me kind of a little bit of structure I can work with if I want to and keep some of my lines straight. Um, so I kind of had in my head, initially I thought, oh, how hard could it be? Like, um, I'd like to get a logbook in about the same size as the one I have now. And with a dot grid and something that ideally is cute, <laughs> like has a pretty cover or something, because I may very well be using this and working on this for the next four years. <laughs> so, um, and in my head I thought, oh, how cool would it be if I found like one that had a, a dragon or something on it even. You guys, I ended up spending like a good two hours the other night researching logbooks. <laughs> trying to find something that I loved and that I felt like was gonna tick all the boxes for me. The next day I hit up like four different stores checking out their notebook and journal aisles to see if maybe they had something in the store that wasn't showing up as I was searching on the website and it just you know I do you ever get like that where you just get an idea in your head and 
you just, you can't think about anything else until you find the thing that you have in your head and you're just, you're on a mission. That's kind of the mode I was in for a few days. I've, I've managed to break my mind out of that and think about other things. <laughs> I think because I have a backup option or two and I do have some time. I think I probably have another month or so before I finish like actually filling up that, that first log book. Um, but dang, it's, it's almost like the more that I've realized that my options are limited, the more determined I've gotten to find just the right thing because now it's like, well, I've invested all this time in trying to find it. So it better darn well be perfect. It's, which is completely not how it should work, but you know, I've looked at so many different small shops. I was even on like eBay and Mercari at one point and you know, some someday I'll, I will find something hopefully sooner rather than later. But yeah, so that's been, that's been my hyper fixation of, of the week. Um, diamond painting logbook, but, um, yeah, so that, that's been on the brain. And then I have my dilemma that I was talking about in my latest Disney mystery sticker diamond painting. That's such a mouthful, by the way. Let me tell you how hard it was to come up with like, what do I want to even put in the title? Like, how do I want to sort of mark this um, so that it makes sense? It's like, it's mystery, it's Disney, it's diamond painting, it's stickers. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so I was talking about in that video that I'm in, I have a dilemma now where I have, is it, I think just 17 more characters that I need of the 102. And here's the thing. I love, 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 love doing those unboxing videos with you guys, guessing what the characters are going to be from the colors and stuff. And I don't want it to be over, but, but statistics say that I need to call it and just start doing swaps because the numbers are not going to be in my favor in, in terms of me actually getting the ones that I still need if I buy another batch. But also like a lot of you guys were with me and being like, this is so fun. I don't want it to be over yet. Do just one more batch. So I, I, I may do one more batch and then I really might need to be done. But, um, no, I'm like, I'm sad it's going to be over and I need more diamond painting, like blind box type things because this has been so much fun and I have been deliberately stretching it out and letting like a month go by in between, uh, different haul unboxings because it's so much fun and I'm trying to stretch it out because there's like, after we finish this, I don't know of any other kind of blind box collectible style diamond painting things to do. So, um, I don't know. I don't know though. Maybe I should just take my mountain of duplicates and go start trading instead, but decisions, decisions. <laughs> um, as far as just some general life updates and what's been going on. Um, I am hesitant to get my hopes up, but I'm crossing my fingers. This is going to work out. I think we have someone that is going to come and, um, do our kind of unique kitchen cabinet project that we have. Um, I'm embarrassed to say that it's been a year. It's been over a year since this happened. We had a bunch of water damage and lost just a couple of our kitchen cabinets and our bathroom vanity and like it's got a bunch of dry, it's got like a bunch of walls, uh, a drywall and stuff. And it was a whole thing. Walls are back up, everything's painted and everything, but we don't have our kitchen cabinets replaced or the um, vanity in our downstairs bathroom replaced. And it turned into this whole situation I was not expecting where I just cannot get someone to come out and do this kitchen cabinet project because we saved all of the drawers and doors and like the front panels of the old cabinets so that we can match the ones that did not have to get removed due to, to water damage. Um, but I just was continuously being told, no, we're not going to do that project because it's not like a big enough project. Like that's such a small potatoes project and we're doing like whole kitchen renos or nothing else. So why don't you just save up until you can do a whole kitchen reno and then call us. And I was like, that's, that's wow. Okay. No, <laughs> that's, that's not going to be us. Or I would just get ghosted. Like I just wouldn't get a call back. Um, and it was very discouraging, very frustrating, but I, um, 
I talked to someone, it's more of like a small um, operation thing where it's like a family thing. And it's more of like a construction handyman type thing. And I had a really good conversation with them on the phone. And it's looking like, I mean, we have the date on the calendar, but there's a huge part of me that doesn't want to get my hopes up because I'm just so convinced that they're going to come out and they're going to, once they actually see it in person, because like we've sent a lot of pictures, we talked through it in a lot of detail, but I'm still convinced that they may come out here in person. And then there's something that they're going to see and go, oh, actually, no, we can't do this. This isn't going to work. Um, so I'll be holding my breath a little bit, but they're supposed to come out in mid-April. I will cry actual tears of relief and joy when we finally have a functional kitchen again. But um one, one thing at a time. They'll also hypothetically be able to do our bathroom vanity. And I, I'm probably going to ask them to do a couple other just really small scale projects if this, if this goes well. But oh, you guys, if you could send some positive thoughts for this to work out, that would be wonderful because the situation with our kitchen and having like, it's our tall pantry that we don't have at the moment. And a, a one major like counter and the cabinet that's under it. Um, that's like affecting my mental health and has been for a while that like, I don't have these things to make my kitchen more functional and, um, we need that like storage space and stuff. So anyway, I would really appreciate any positivity you have to send our way with, with that particular project, but yes, fingers crossed. Um, I do feel like maybe maybe this is just part of me kind of getting some momentum, getting my mojo back. We we picked up, we, we finally have new kitchen chairs, though they still, I still need to assemble them. Uh, got that new set of like shelves and I've, I picked out some uh, baskets to see if they'll work in there up by our upstairs bathroom to give us some additional storage up there. So it's like maybe I'm kind of working towards getting some of my um, energy and mojo back for just sort of getting the house little more organized and um easier to work and live in (laughs) um and as the boys get older it's just like they're just gonna have like more stuff it's just gonna we're just gonna need that organization that much more but yeah it feels good to maybe getting a little bit of it more of a handle on things um my youngest had a birthday this past week and I was a little emotional over it. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> um, but we, we haven't done like a big celebration for it yet. We're going to do that with Adam's family, I think next weekend, but it was just fun to, to celebrate his birthday. Another year gone by. I don't know who told him he was allowed to get so big, but he's just, he's just the best. I love him so much. Um, and he lost his first tooth. So it's been, it's been a big couple of weeks here. And then We did go to an Easter service at church today, and I was just feeling very full of gratitude because um, our church has added some more kind of robust um, support and um, kind of like services available for kids with special needs and stuff that like really wasn't there before. And... It just felt, I just felt, I mean, that's been a barrier to us before. Um, It just was wonderful to feel like, okay, there's this space that is really great and set up for my youngest. And it, I just felt very, I don't know, content and relieved to be able to, to drop him off there and had a really, really, really nice conversation with the, the gal that runs that particular department and I just felt like I could breathe a huge sigh of relief. So happy for that. Happy for that. And then the kids are on spring break this week. So this is going to be an interesting week, particularly because my husband works primarily from home. Um, and I was kind of bugging him a little bit going, you know, the kids are going to be home. Like, I don't know if you want to look into getting a co-working space just for like the week or part of the week. Cause he takes a lot of like work calls and stuff. And I mean, you try telling uh, these kiddos that they have to be quiet for work calls. Um, but he could also, you know, potentially go into the office. But we don't have any, like, huge plans for this week. But I'm going to try to see if there are a few things I can do to get us out of the house, have a little bit of fun, make some some fun memories with spring break. But um, 
you know, no big trips planned or anything like that. Um, maybe this summer though, because we had that really successful and wonderful road trip to Arizona last month. And it's like, okay, we know the kids can totally road trip. We should, we should see if there's like a little mini family vacation we might want to do this summer that we can drive, drive to. I don't know. Let's have to think about that. Um, as far as what I have been reading and watching and listening to, um, reading wise, I, I have been getting some interesting and fun recommendations from a couple of Facebook groups that I'm in. Um, what's the name of the one? It's like fans of urban fantasy or something like that. And, um, every once in a while someone will post like a meme or a reel of something like a trope or something. And then the comment section will just be full of recommendations. And so I have several things that I have added to my TBR, my to be read pile because of that (laughs) bunch of enablers, I'm telling you. Um, but then as far as watching, I am still, of course, doing my, my supernatural rewatch after the convention. I just am on a total kick. I'm on the, on the last season, but that doesn't mean anything because what happens is I get to the end of the last season and go, I just don't want it to be over then. And I just, then I start back over at season one. It's just tale as old as time. I've done that like four times. It's great. It's like comfort food, you know? (laughs) But then the other night, Adam and I sat down and we were like, neither of us really had anything that like, I didn't need to film that night. And he didn't have anything pressing to work on. And we're like, why, how are we not like making use of of a free evening. Let's, um, let's watch one of these shows that we've been talking about trying to watch together for forever. And so we started back up with, and both of us were kind of on the same page. Honestly, we started back up with Star Trek Deep Space Nine, um, which we had watched the first almost full five seasons of when it was on Netflix and then broke from it for like a couple, a year or two. But then we recently had signed up for Paramount Plus because there were a couple of shows I think Adam really wanted to watch in particular, Star Trek, really. Uh, he's been watch, re-watching The Next Generation. But we did. We sat down, we watched a couple episodes of Deep Space Nine the other night. We're nearing the end of season five. I think there's seven seasons in total. And so it was fun. It was really, really fun to get back to that because we used to watch a lot more um a lot more shows together. Um, but we tend to, I don't know, we both tend to make a lot of use of the evenings as far as like kind of getting work and other little projects done when the kids are in bed. So, but yeah, that was fun to, it really was, uh, neat to get back to that. And, um, yeah, no Star Trek. Anyone else a Star Trek nerd? (laughs) I'm a Star Trek nerd. Uh, this also brought, brings to mind a, a really, really fun conversation that, um, we had in, um, I have a, I have a Patreon. I, I know I mentioned it before, but I have a, a tier that gets a monthly live stream from me. And this one was really hysterical and fun. Um, Adam was actually hanging out and he was chatting along with us. And, um, the, the topic got brought up of, I think it was my friend Casey had asked, sorry if it was someone else, um, had asked what, is your favorite like childhood show? What's the first like show, the TV show that you remember loving as a child? And oh my gosh, there's a whole span of generations in there. And I would, I'd be curious to hear what your guys is, uh, what you would say is yours. Like what was your first favorite TV show as a kid or shows? If you want to mention multiple, there was everything from, you know, Care Bears and Barney and, um, what were some of the ones for like people that were young, that are younger? I don't remember, but it was just, it sparked this whole discussion and we discovered this crazy crossover anti-drugs, like film, like sh- film that had after school thing that had uh, come out in the nineties. That was a wacky, wacky trip. It had like, Cartoon there the it rescue. goes. Cartoon all-stars to the rescue. Oh my gosh. What a moment in time. I was like Winnie the Pooh and Bugs Bunny and Garfield and like it just the Smurfs and Alf and it was so weird and so trippy and so hilarious but um sponsored it was by sponsored by McDonald's and spearheaded by George Bush senior and his wife so what a moment in time 
but that was a real, that was a really, really fun discussion. Um, so mine as a kid, I, I mean, no shame. I was a huge Barney fan as a kid, honestly, it helped me like get over <laughs> any trepidation fear I had of going like to the doctor. And I also really loved lamb chops play along. Um, <laughs> Sesame Street, I was like, yes, Reading Rainbow. Um, we didn't have cable until I was much older, but um, what else was there? I was not allowed to watch Power Rangers because there was fighting. Um, but anyway, it was just, it was a fun little trip down down memory lane and to hear different things that people, you know, remembered and um, what they'd grown up on and, and whatnot. So let me know what, what was yours. What was your favorite, first, like, show that you remember loving and being a favorite show of yours when you were a kid. Um, yeah. <laughs> For, I don't even know what my kids would say when they're older because there's just, you know, this is the era of YouTube and so many different streaming services. It's not like back in my day, you know, it was, we didn't have cable. There were four channels and one of them really was the one that had consistent like kids programming that my parents felt like was child appropriate. And so it was like, no, there were like two or three shows that you might watch as opposed to now where it's just infinity. When I was infinity. your age, I to channel four and just <laughs> waited for the whole thing to scroll by and tell me oh what was gosh. on. And That's if so I true. forgot, I waited until it all went by again. <laughs> He's a lot older than I am, so he's got especially different experiences. <laughs> Wondering how many of your audience is going to be like, you did what? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, it's so true, though. Anyway, so yeah, looking forward to reading what you guys have to share. <laughs> as far as what I've been listening to, um, I have had a little bit on, I say this is listening maybe more than watching, but with... Taylor Swift, the heiress to our concert being on Disney plus now. It's like, this is great background noise. What are you talking about? Um, that's, it's just, it's delightful. It's delightful. <laughs> um, as far as what I have coming up this week for videos, I will have my month in review for March. I, I think I want to, I, I don't know if it'll be this week or if I'll wait till next week to do my dedicated post review of my Castiel custom that I had signed. Um, I do want to have a dedicated video for that, even though I did share in last week's whip and chat, the story of, you know, sharing it with him and telling him about time and painting and having it signed. Um, but yeah, um, we'll see. And then I'll have all the, I'll have a time in our club sneak peek that I'll just say, I think you guys are going to go, what <laughs> it is wildly outside of my usual genre and it just it was it was one of those weeks so but I am you know I'm gonna go into it with uh with open open eyes and go no this is okay. like yeah this will be this will be fun um so I'll be I'll be curious to see I fully anticipate that I'm gonna get teased over this one or people going what what? Isn't this something that you regularly say you don't enjoy? Um, but shh, don't tell anyone I told you. <laughs> um, and then we'll see what else, what else will be coming as far as content this week. Just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, um, how about, let's see, what should we do? Um, how about emoji, an emoji that has the color blue in it somewhere because we've had so many shades of blue in here. Is that a piece of putty that I just scraped on there? I'm not sure. I can't tell. I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, so we didn't quite finish the section, but we got through a good, good chunk of it. You can see how, yeah, there is some confetti here in the background, but I think it works for the color shading for the most part. I'll be curious to sort of make a judgment call on that once I have more of it done, but you know, not too, not too shabby, not too shabby. I think that's all of that particular number, which is a perfect place to stop. Ooh, one more. I see it. Okay, you guys, let me know what you were up to while we were uh, chatting today. If you were diamond painting along with me and what was the other thing? Oh, your favorite childhood show and how you're doing. 
feel free to subscribe like i mentioned at the beginning of the video um if you want to see a lot more diamond painting content from me i'd absolutely love to have you here thank you for watching i appreciate you all so 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 much and um truly truly look forward to these videos and getting to chat with you each week and hearing from you too so have a wonderful wonderful week my friends and i will talk to you again soon bye